A warm welcome to Anuradha Vedic Astrology. Today we are going to talk about Amsha rulers as is requested by many of our subscribers. So, what are Amsha rulers? How do they help us? And how do they help us to decode the chart? Are the relevant questions in this video? But before that, a big thanks to all of you for liking, sharing, and subscribing to our YouTube and Spotify channels and writing in your questions, your suggestions, and your comments to us. This helps us to know you better. In case you haven't subscribed to us, please do. And do remember to press the bell icon so that we can send you the updates ASKP. What are the Amsha readers? The 16 divisional charts that are taught to us by Rishi Parashar fall into the Shodash Varga or they form the 16 divisional charts for us. Each divisional charts, like when we take it up from the Rasi chart, D1 chart, we take up our each Rashi and each Rashi is divided into many parts, whether equal or unequally. And each such part is under the jurisdiction of a particular deity in different divisional charts. So, in the D2 chart, where each Rashi is divided into two parts, that is, of 15 degree each, one part is given to the Pitris and the other part is given to the Devatas. Similarly, in the D10 chart, each Rashi is divided into 10 parts, and there are 10 rulers, deities, the Dikpals, which hold sway over each division. These deities are known as the Amsha rulers. In the D60, we find 60 deities being the Amsha rulers. So each divisional chart will have its own set of divisional rulers. How are they important for us? They are important for us because they help us understand the character of a person. Not just the character of a person, but they also help us understand the intricate events that unfold in a person's life. And most importantly for us, how to time the events as to when some probability of a good rise in life, of a good period in our profession, according to D10, that's going to happen. If we are talking about the D2 or the Hora, the wealth, the food, the education, when is it going to happen for us? Is it going to happen without much effort or is it going to take a lot of effort? All these things can be well judged by the Dasha Lord and everything else falling in the different categories so on. And what is the importance of each of these deities? So each of these deities, say for the D9, there are three deities. The Devatas, the Manushya and the Rakshasas. We all are very much aware of the qualities that they have. So if my seventh lord is in a particular Amsha, say it's in the Devamsha. I know what kind of spouse I'm likely to have. Here, your major question is going to be, is it going to be the seventh lord of the D1 chart or the seventh lord of the D9 chart, which is a very relevant point. So how do I look into it? The seventh lord of the D9 chart is important, but the seventh lord of the D1 chart is also important. We, they can be in mixed amshas, in various amshas, different amshas, and they will give you a mixed result for sure. Also, when we look into the profession, when we look into the uh, D20 chart, when somebody wants to move into a spiritual life, you have to take into account the, the amsha ruler of that particular house also. I'll teach it all to you as we go along the Way. Now, let us see the position. Uh, let us take up three charts here because this is a huge and vast topic and it takes lots and lots of time to make clear everything. 
So just to explain certain points, I'll take up three different charts, D9, D10, and the D20. D9, because marriage, or for that matter, spouse is very important. They are not just for marriage, not just for uh, any other thing, but companionship in life is a basic call of all the beings. And when we talk about career, because the most working waking hours we spend in our career. So what is it that we'll be able to achieve? That is important. So we'll look into the detail also. And finally, for those here on this platform, spirituality makes a lot of difference for you people. And definitely for me. So to understand how can we gauge our spirituality, we'll move into that zoner of D20 also. So when we talk about how to draw the answer chart, first and foremost, I take the D1 chart. So now we have a Rasi chart. We go right at the bottom of the basics uh, page and we see an Amsha ruler there. I move into the Amsha ruler. I click on the right button on the chart and get the Navamsha here. I also can choose with the click of the right button on that Amsha ruler page, whichever Amsha rulers I want to know about. D10, D20, D9, whichever that I want to know about. Now, the if you looked into the Rashi chart, you would see that Venus was the seventh lord. And in the D9 chart, Jupiter is the seventh lord. I see Jupiter being in the Manushya Amsha here. So, and I see Venus being in the Rakshash Amsha. Now, what is it that, uh, and how do I now express what the person would be like? The person on a single appearance to others may be very strong, may be very bold, may be very uh, stubborn and may be very focused. But basically, on an inner level, the person is uh, very adjusting and will accommodate himself or herself according to the need of the hour. Because Jupiter is in Manushyamsha and Venus is in Rakshashamsha. And what does the scripture tell us? The scripture tells us that the Rashi is the tree and its fruit is the Namamsha. So we understand the basic quality through the Rashi and the inherent or the more subtle quality to the Namamsha. This is how you have to correlate between the Amsha ruler and the Rashi ruler. Okay. So this is about the Namamsha. Now, let us move into the D10. Just one ruler. There are 10 big pearls. So, uh, they, it can be Kuber, it can be Niruti, it can be Vayu, it can be Agni, it can be Yama, it can be Brahma, it can be Indra, it can be Ananta, it can be Rudra. Like that, we have the 10 rulers here in the D10 chart. I'm just taking up Indra because he's a very well-known figure of being the lord of the Devatas. Now, if my 10th lord of the D10 is in Indra Amsha, I know for sure that I will have a good position in terms of my uh, business, in terms of my work. Even if I am in a job, it means I have the ability to become the CEO of the company. Deshkal Patra taken into consideration. But... There will also be, how do I go about doing it? If the benefic influences, it means that I'll be aware, very careful about how I move up. I will but move up high up in the ladder. In case there are malefic influences, I will restore to any means, fair or foul, and move up at that point and position. When will I do that? depending on the planet Dasha. So timing also to be able to reach that place is very much possible by 
the planet concerned, by the Devata concerned, how they even beautifully unfold. Many a times you will find people telling you, you will do good. But how will you do good? When will you do good? Is something that the Amsha rulers very carefully tell it out to us. Again, the kind of work that you will do. Indra Amsha says, the work of a high profile person, CEO, etc. Administrative ability, Ananta or Lord Vishnu. Creative personality, Lord Brahma. Again, as I say, there is so much work that we can work and fold out with the Amsha rulers for sure. That is why we need to understand the divisional charts and the Amsha rulers in particular to see where we are heading for. For those into the spiritual way of life, how do you go about uh, unfolding or doing your sadhana? The shaktis are the one that lead you to the ultimate. So what is it that the shaktis are trying to tell you? How is it that you need to pray to be able to unfold these shaktis? Basically, they have given 40 shaktis associated and they uh, give you different methods, different approach of uh, moving towards the same ultimate. Here, to make the point more clear, I have taken up the chart of Ramna Maharshi. We know that he was one of the biggest yogis that of the near past that we are aware of. And so to understand what was more important in his chart that led him to uh, become such a yogi? He can look into his D20. Where did his sadhana originate from? How did he do it? So, we take the chart of Ramna Maharshi and we again move into his D1 first. We see that his D1 here, the 8th Lord is Shukra or Venus. And when we look into his D20 chart, we see the 8th Lord is Mars. Okay. So now let us point out those two Amsha rulers. I have taken the Amsha rulers of Mars and Venus here. Mars is in Raudri and Venus is in Daya Amshas. Okay. So how do I now go about doing that? Now, Rodri is a female form of Rudra and it is the one form of Kali who saved the Devatas. And when we talk about Daya, we know that she is the one which shows mercy and compassion. And there are a lot of things that we can, there's grace, there are a lot of things associated with her. If you look into the typical style of Ramna Maharshi, you will understand that his style he was a bhakta. He was devotee of Lord Shiva, Radri. Yet, there was a lot of grace, compassion, and a lot of prosperity in his teachings. You will find a lot of reflection of these goddesses in his way of life. So, to understand the nature of a person, to understand timing of events, to understand how the events are likely to unfold, the Amsha rulers of the divisional charts are very important. You need to pay great deal of attention to their stories, to their habits, to be able to correlate with the uh, things working out and folding in your lives. Do write to us. Do let us know how you found these videos. And before we leave, stay safe, stay happy. Please and hit the bell icon for fresh updates. Don't forget to like, share and comment on the videos and please subscribe to our channel.